This is absolutely Yahtzee! Alright, what is up Yahtzeeers? Yahtzee Johnny is here. And Happy New Year to all of you. I'm certainly ready for 2000. Fucking 18. It's going to be the year of movies to see. It's just going to be the year in general. Like one of those years, you know, it's going to be it's going to be so fucking hype. All right, let's back up a little. You know, get some space between us. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. Nope, I don't like that. I like that. All right. So, Game of Thrones, which I fucking love, versus Lord of the Rings, which I fucking love. So I guess we're comparison them. Comparing them. Okay. Cool. Also, you know, I've I've watched W W from time to time. I'll probably stream the Royal Rumble because you know it's interesting, you know, new channel. Something to do. Uh hopefully it turns out differently. But um yeah. The shield make it interesting. But let me tell you something. If that stupid bitch, Jason Jordan, ruins the fucking shit, I swear to God, I would love to snap his fucking neck. And I hope he does, if that happens. Let's do this! There's epic fantasy, and then there is epic fantasy. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today gone. we'll be comparing Game John? of Thrones and The Lord of the Rings to decide, in a night dark and full of terrors, which story is the one to rule them Time all. Time to turn into... We, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great mode. content. We'll be looking at a range of elements, considering both the books and the TV and film adaptations so many have come to know and love. Round one, world building. He won't build boy forever. It had stuck. Anyone who has read or watched Game of Thrones, or The Song of Ice and Fire as the print series is called, knows that it is so well built, you think it hit the gym every morning. Each major house of Westeros contains complicated family trees, and each town has its own history mapped out for centuries. Yeah, I and know not that. just in Westeros, because, oh no, this I didn't is find that disgusting building. at all. While George I found R. R. Martin that kind did of not create the languages that were later used intriguing. in the HBO series, he did produce creation myths That's my boy. Traditions, culture, and history for the Seven Kingdoms and across the Narrow Sea. For the night is dark. Shut the, the fuck up. Terror. Fuck you. Weather tubes in the white walls that the sun's first light crept over the top of the trees. Excuse my language in this video, y'all. This stuff gets me going. Game of Thrones in particular gets me going. Lord of the Rings, still. The Game of Thrones gets me going. So many people who I would including functional languages that can still be learned by enthusiasts to this day. If the details of lineage and history seem extra rich, and sometimes exhaustively detailed, in Lord of the Rings, it's because they are. The world of Middle-earth extends past what is contained in the print trilogy, or even the films. There is much more to Tolkien's extended universe. If any cinematic or bibliographic fantasy world is described as Tolkien-esque, well, you know who to tip your wizard's hat to. Winner, Lord of the Rings. I can't choose favorites in this one. Round two. Heroes. I've killed brothers of the Night's Watch. I've killed wildlings. I've killed men that I admire. Yeah, you I sure had a have, boy big boy. Younger than Bran. What makes villains great can, ironically, make heroes Bran can go suck it. frustrating. Maybe we're just being too black and white about it. But when rooting for a side in a fantasy world, it's nice to feel that one can make a solid moral choice. I was so That's happy when he did that. Of Westeros Those and guys are not can go. They are remarkably die. human, with all their failings in tow. Jon Snow makes hard and at times shocking judgment calls as Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Daenerys is willing to use entire city-states as a training ground on how to justly rule. And Arya is a damaged girl with her. who has baby No, I'm in love with Arya, to be show. honest. It's a thin line between the good Look at they that pursue and the domination oh my envisioned goodness. by their more villainous counterparts. Marry me. Now. Come on. You're nothing. Ooh, that's lovely. I have no lovely. Maisie, you've got it. Badass girl. They may be somewhat narrowly drawn, but the heroes of Lord of the Rings are beacons of virtue and hope. Resoundingly Get the good fuck. and honorable. What? Her? Boromir was a little complicated. Their traits are drawn from classic literary epics. Loyalty, honesty, concern for the well-being of the masses, and bravery. Elves, hobbits, humans, dwarves, and Ow. even trees demonstrate these things in spades. Although reluctant to take up the mantle, Aragorn is a natural leader, unflinching in his efforts. Legolas and Gimli are the best allies a hobbit could have. Eowyn is courageous Boy, and Legolas. loyal. Gandalf is a wise-ass kicking guide. Then there's Sam. Freaking Sam. The purest of pure <laughs> friends. And maybe the bravest of them all. Sam's like Sam in Game of Thrones. A promise. Don't yeah. you leave him, Samwise Gamgee. And I don't mean to. Listen, 
The world right now really Fucking is dark you, and full of terrors. And some days you really just need the light of a red deal, okay? Winner, Lord of the Rings. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you. <laughs> Come on! Round three, villains. Game of Thrones. Fuck you. Fuck you. There is no doubt that there are villainous, treacherous, and downright I'm so glad your ass died, you stupid son of a bitch. Get out of my face. As in professional wrestling, bad guys and fan favorites like Jamie Lannister. Even the more villainous characters like Cersei have their own real motivations, backstories, and a human side. I cannot wait till she dies. understands how they became the way they are, even if you don't agree with their present actions. The truly sadistic individuals, Ramsey Bolton, Joffrey, and the like, are clearly psychotic or cool. yet are still given their own story development. She's a fine woman. No, no, he can sing, right? I look forward to having her back in my bed. Just because you're evil doesn't mean you can't be well-rounded evil. And the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord's Yeah, he's badass too, but he didn't really do shit. A master ring to control all others. The white hat, black hat really divisions are shit. pretty clearly drawn in Middle Earth. The heroes are literally on the side of light, while evildoers are sprung from darkness, mud, and fire. That's racist. It's easy to spot the good guys in a scene. The beautiful, pastorally wholesome, and mythologically glamorous individuals who are sure to be your bros. On the other hand, the giant Fleming eye is, like, bad. Tolkien used outward nature as a symbol of the I mean, corrupt yeah, nature but... within. Not just with hideous monster orcs, but with humans whose evil shows through on the outside. Like the treacherous Grima Wormtongue, or the cowardly and scheming Denethor II. You think you are wise, Mr. They don't Indian. get me... Except for the curious case of Gollum, twisted by the power of the White Ring. I don't hate him, though. Gollum's awesome. Are you kidding me? Earth. Winner, Game of Thrones. Yeah, Thorns. you see? I think that sounds like they, Game of Thrones has villains that I would Round love four, to punch in. Battles. Wait, what is that? Shit. After Robert Baratheon found himself on the business end of a board, and Eddard Stark lost a little off the top, the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros were thrown into chaos. The beginning of the second book, and second season of the series, saw the start of the War of Five Kings, and things never really slowed down from there. There are so many great battles, from the explosive Battle of the Blackwater, to the tense, emotionally wrought Battle of Castle Black, to the chill-inducing Battle of the Bastards. It is well nigh impossible to nail down the best, but with perhaps the greatest battle of all, that between literal ice and fire, looming over Westeros, we're sure the best is somehow still yet to come. Wait, you do know that. Tolkien made sure his epic struggle between the powers of good and evil that had fight plenty was of bad ass. Struggle, Loved it. Fantastically detailed violence, I had to get up Peter and Jackson's masterful take on the trilogy successfully brought all of it to life. The harrowing Battle of Hornburg, also known as the Battle of Helm's Deep, saw our heroes cornered that as they cool, defended the Rohirrim like... against a massive onslaught of orcs, Urukai, and other nasties straight out of Mordor. And who can forget the Siege of Gondor Love and the ensuing that. Battle of the Pelennor Fields? where Sauron's forces attacked, and yet our heroes reigned victorious. It's close, but for the sheer number of battles, and their many surprising results and tense execution, we're giving this one to Martin. Winner, Game of Thrones. Close though, guys. You guys both have great battles. Round five, Legacy. Game of Thrones. Since HBO premiered Game of Thrones, it has reignited the high fantasy and epic genres. With many TV series like Vikings, The Shannara Chronicles, and Marco Polo cropping up over a spectrum of networks, we don't blame don't, them for I trying to tap into the literary that, adaptation other success, other but named, none have quite been able to match the pop culture phenomenon. They often focus too heavily on one of two aspects that make Game of Thrones a sensation. For example, violence, sex, fantasy, violent sex realities, medieval trappings, political intrigue, yeah, and like so sex on. Not much sex in Game of Thrones. Unfortunately. I don't know when, I don't know who we'll be fighting. But it's coming. Hello, Robert. But they so often lack the detailed richness of character development and plot arc, and so they miss the core elements of what makes the Iron Throne narrative so engrossing. One ring to rule them all. On the other hand, there's zero doubt about it. Every high fantasy written or filmed yeah. since the 1950s is deeply indebted to Lord of the Rings. Jeez, even the RR in George R.R. R. Martin is a nod to the late great John Ronald Rule Tolkien. From his peerless academic background, Tolkien set out to write a great epic novel in the Bane of Beowulf. And the extensive work that went into creating The Lord of the Rings has endeared it to countless fans over decades. Its fame shows no signs of slowing down. The books have sold over 150 million copies to date and still fly off the shelves. And now, Amazon Studios has committed huge dollars to developing a new TV adaptation. 
The road goes ever on and on. Winner, Lord of the Rings. And the Lord of the Rings, my Frodo Baggins. You finished it. Huh. Not quite. I guess, because there was more focus so on the character than It's the one at, fantasy franchise to rule them all. Lord of the Rings forever. Do you agree with our verdict? I... Sure, why not? Makes sense, I guess. There's that. Do it again. Look at the picture. Uh, I love both so much. Both get me so goddamn fucking emotional. Let me know if you feel the same. Uh, also, tell me which you like better and which you would have cho which um you thought should have won, like you know. Um, yeah, I can't wait till season eight. Can't wait for Cersei to get what's coming to her. Um, hopefully Tyrion doesn't do anything bad. Behave yourself now, dude. Because, you know, if we all saw when uh, John and Daenerys were getting it on, you know, I'd be pretty jealous too, but still. Yeah. Well, I'm excited for season eight, and I love both series... Both, you know, both things. They're both awesome. Anyway, if you enjoyed my reaction, or I guess, I don't know if this was a review of mine, but I guess it's basically a reaction, hit the like button and subscribe and share, y'all. Come on. And let me know what y'all thought and what you think of both series. Not, I guess, series and franchise. And, uh, yeah. Because I you on you, I'll tell you this. You knew nothing. Yahtzees. One thousand, nineteen million, nineteen hundred million. Yahtzee! Eh!